It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. <laughs> Just more of the same. I mean, you know, we keep knocking on the door. We're going to get our win here, and uh, it'll be, you know, that much more special. I mean, it's it, this this racing at this level. Wins don't come easy. They're not going to give them to you. You know, uh, the 18 and, and the, the 20 car have been beating us week in and week out pretty much all season long, and uh, on these bigger racetracks. And uh, you know, to to be able to somewhat, you know, I maintained with him. I really felt like we were kind of tit for tat there, and uh, we were, you know as good as they were and, and it's been a long time on a track like this where we were as good as they were. Uh, Bruce Martin with SI.com and National Speed Sport News. Clint, were your eyes getting real big when you saw Stremme alongside uh, Hamlin there with about 25 to go? Because it kind of looked like for a guy <laughs> trying to get his lap back, it was a pretty tough, tough battle. Yeah, the uh, my eyes were really big when he was beside the 18 and then they uh, turned into a frown pretty quick when he rode beside me for five laps or something. I mean, uh, I guess he was, just in case the 18 had trouble, he was wanting to beat me. I don't know what the hell he was thinking, in other words. Bob, <laughs> uh, Bob Pockers, NASCAR St. Clint. Um, if you had gotten a yellow there late, did you think you would have had something for uh, Denny? I certainly would have tried. <laughs> Probably done something stupid, but uh, um, you know, I, I, I would have tried. I mean, obviously, you want to protect your points lead, but hey, man, you only get an opportunity to win at home once a year, and uh, you know, it'd be pretty special to win here. We keep getting close, keep getting closer. You know, we just gotta keep keep knocking at the door, like I say, and I, I really feel like we'll win here someday. Looks like we'll get two chances a year at it uh, here in the future, so that'd be even here. David. Was it just, excuse me, David Poole, Charlotte Zucker, was it just that the leader, the two cars that led all day, Harvick first and then Hamlin were strong, or was this a, one of those races where the leader just, the clean air just dictated that lead? Well, I think in Harvick's case, he had the speed, you know, up front of a run every time, but I think we saw how much clean air, you know, hurt him when the 18 was in front of him and he never went back around him. I really thought that he would pass the 18 right there, but uh, clean air is is irreplaceable. I mean, you you know, you can just pick up, whether it be a short track or a big track, for some reason, if you're the leader, you're a tenth faster, you know, and, and on these bigger race tracks, sometimes two or three tenths faster. So, um, you know, it's a bummer that Harvick had trouble, obviously. I don't know. Uh, he's as close thing to a teammate as, as you know we can get. Uh, you know, obviously Burton, but uh, um, he had trouble there, and uh, you know that that was a that was a bummer. I mean, the grand scheme of things, we had an awesome day. He can't ask for much more. Obviously a win, but um, to beat the 60 car, that's what we got to do in the grand scheme of things, and put cars in between us so we can gain points on. Them. Clint, I just got done talking to Carl out there, and um, he said the only way he's going to catch you is if he delivers cookies on race day that are filled with x lax uh, So do you just realize kind of the battle that's going on between the two local guys and, you know, how much, I mean, you've got that target on your back, but Carl especially is aiming for you. Yeah, absolutely. And to come back here, I mean, this is both of our home tracks. I mean, it's kind of the battle of the borders, you know, for Carl and I to, to be here, him being from Missouri on me being from the Kansas side, uh, he, me being a KU fan, him being an MU fan, uh, you know, we have a lot of fun with that. And trust me, there's there's not two racers out there that want to win here more than, than you know, he and I. But um, it's been fun racing with him all season long sometimes. And uh, he, he doesn't race fair all the time. But uh, uh, but he always <laughs> says he's sorry. Yeah. And he's always sorry. Hell, his own teammate even yeah. realizes that. He's been sorry to you too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brandon, yeah. if you could uh, wait for the microphone, please. Yeah, Clint, if you could just expand a little bit on the point situation. You didn't win the race, but you certainly five to go. Yeah. How do you feel about the, your championship? You know, we want to win more races. I mean, we compete week in and week out. We travel across the country to win races. You don't, you don't travel across the country, you know, and, and 
be gone that much from home and not want to win. I mean, that's what we're here for. We're racers. We want to win, but uh, we want to win a championship. We won races in this, and if I don't win another race and I have that championship trophy on my mantle, I won't be a bit um, sorry and I won't feel bad about it. I mean, we've done the things it takes to win a championship. We're solid week in and week out. Um, the guys prepare good cars. You know, it, it really comes down to preparation in the, in the shop before you get to the racetrack, and i uh, got a good group of guys that's taking care of me. Any additional questions? Come here and then we'll go to Bob. Any, uh, does, any, any questions for David? Let's go to Bob first and then we'll come back. Pardon me. This is actually for both you guys. Um, Denny had his cup crew chief over there since their crew chiefs are, have been benched. I mean, do you guys ever want your cup crew chiefs over there talking to you on Saturdays or do you feel like they have enough to kind of worry about and not be there? <laughs> Go ahead, let him in yeah, so that he can go. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind to have my cup crew chief around. He'd probably make my bush crew chief so nervous that, uh, you know, it'd be catastrophe in the pits. But, um, no, it'd be good to have my uh, cup, crew, cup crew chief around a little bit. You just maybe to pick up on a few things. And, you know, even if he's not here, he looks over the notes and he knows what we did uh, all day today. So he's, uh, he's back at the hotel watching on TV, but he'll know what we did anyway. And me, no. <laughs> He's got his hands full enough trying to make that animal over there handle. It's, uh, um, you know, and I, I still believe in the system of stepping stones to, to getting people to the top level. Um, no different than us drivers, I, you know, crew chiefs, crew members, things like that. How are you ever going to get guys to the next level, even on the crew chief side of it, if they don't get a chance? Uh, I was given a chance with the right people and, and you know, got me a, a cup ride with a, you know, a wonderful organization. And, uh, you know, Dan Daringhoff will be an awesome crew chief someday in a cup series. And because of the Nationwide Series is, is why. Casey Walk up KSN in Wichita. Clint, earlier in the week I heard you talk about uh, the border war last year. You were at the game between KU and Missouri. And is this a little revenge on, on Carl a little bit? <laughs> Anytime you can beat Carl, it's revenge. But, uh, um, you know, he's, he's just a good racer. He's a good team. He's with a good organization. And uh, um, it's, it's fun to race with him. I mean, I remember one of my, I think it was the first asphalt race I ever raced. Um, you know, it was against Carl. And um, he beat me. He was cheating, but he beat me. And uh, uh, he really was cheating. But, uh, you know, it's just been fun. I mean, he's a, he's a good guy. He's a likable guy when he's not crashing you, and uh, uh, we have a lot of fun together. Follow up. You've had a number of laps now on the track today. You've had warm-ups, but how does today's race help you going into tomorrow's cup race with, with being familiar with the track? Well, I mean, it's just a boast of confidence. I mean, you know, running well anywhere gives you confidence. It doesn't matter what you're getting in, whether it's the fastest car on the track or the worst car on the track. You know, you, you've learned things. I, I've learned some things on what it takes to be good here on a long run now and a short run and, and what the car balance-wise needs to feel like. I mean, obviously, these cars are way different. But balance-wise, front to rear, you know, grit is, is still balancing four wheels, you know, and a steering wheel. And, and that's what you got. And uh, um, you learn what those need to be like on a day like today, the weather, what the track's going to go through what lap the top will come in and, and maybe not and you know you learn a lot of things coming on pit road we got a green flag pit stop this is uh the pit roads for whatever reason seems like it starts a lot earlier the lines a lot earlier than than even chicago the sister track so you know there's a lot of little things that i've picked up today that uh, i'll work on with my crew chief and and my spotter dylan additional questions sweet Clint, congratulations thank you Thanks, Clint.